What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to talk about how to choose leather. Pretty much in general how to choose leather, but also when it comes to stropping uh, for knives, for uh, razors, and uh, you know, the different types, different qualities, how they're um, you know how they're pro like how they process the leather and different treatments for it. So you have two major types of tanning. You have chrome tan and veg tan. Veg tan is using um, vegetable tannins, <clears throat> and um, it's a more natural way of tanning leather. Uh, it takes longer, so it's more expensive. Uh, like the process takes longer. Chrome tan is is using harsher chemicals, um, added chromium. And that's how uh, you know. That's how they get it to to tan the leather quicker. That's stuff that you usually see like in your car, um, a lot of clothes, like upholstery, that type of stuff. Um, has a different smell than veg tan leather too, or vegetable tan leather. Uh, we're strictly talking about well not strictly but I'd say about 80% of this is just vegetable tan leather when you get into like bridal and harness and latigo sometimes it's what's called retanned uh, where it'll have like a vegetable tanning for part of it but then they might use chrome tanning for like one step and then different tanneries use different methods but for the most part, I would say this is blanket vegetable tan, um, what we're going to be talking about today anyways. So, thinnest that I have over here is kangaroo. Um, it's actually pretty soft, supple, it's incredibly strong, uh, it's the strongest leather that's here. It has like a flexibility to it. But it's still really strong. It's it's awesome stuff. It if you're a knife user or um, you strop on a strop for tools and stuff, kangaroo in my opinion dries the nicest when you spray like diamond spray or if you put like chromium oxide on it and stuff. The way that especially diamond sprays, the way that it dries on kangaroo is by far the nicest. Again, this is all my opinion. Next to that, well, let's just put these four together. Next to that is horse hide or equine. Um, it's a stiffer leather. It's supple. This this piece, especially this is horse butt. Um, it's it's stiff. You know, I mean, it, it holds its shape. Um, it's awesome for. For straight razors, I use it for my knives too. It, it'll also take a really nice spray when you apply like emulsion or spray to it. Emulsion will stiffen it a little bit more. Spray keeps it a little bit more supple. Uh, the backside's very usable too on a horse. It's usually cut really close. Um, and this is veg tan. These are both cowhide. They both come from a it's called a double shoulder, so it's basically from the neck to like the mid back of the. It, it means their shoulders, so like you know, in between their shoulders down to I want to say like you know halfway to their arm. I think is where it stops. Um, actually, maybe even higher up. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure exactly on on where the you know the cut starts and stops but if you google what a double double shoulder veg tan cowhide looks like you'll get the picture um, this is a, uh, I think it was Tandy this is a supplier that I know from eBay and his veg tan is, I mean when you look at these you can tell there's a difference this has a lot more markings on it it's a cheaper piece a lot more scars, like little mosquito bites or you know fly bites and stuff. The even the uh, the color of it is it's like a more of a pink 
this is more of like a peach color. The back, if you look at the backs, you can see, hopefully, that this shorter piece has the fur on it is like much thicker. Um, this is actually like a nicer piece of the double shoulder too. There's parts of it that the hair that's sticking up is just nasty. Um, the closer that the, the nap on the back is, the better quality treat of the, the tanning process is usually. Um, that's a pretty big sign of getting a quality piece of leather is the back will be almost as smooth as the front. Um, this front is incredibly smooth. Um, I actually made a weightlifting belt out of the double shoulder and this is just like a scrap piece left. Um, the way that, so this is I believe 8 to 10 ounce and this is 5 to 7 ounce. The way that this will take like a, a diamond spray or an emulsion is, I mean it's night and day compared to this. The way that they dry, uh, the way that they'll, they'll take like wax and, and stain or um, leather dye, again night and day. You know, this might take you four to five coats of leather dye, whereas this will take maybe two or three and it distributes into the hide better it distributes over that like you don't have to cross hatch as much when you go to dye it it's incredible and you know not much of a price difference you know you're talking for a double shoulder of this I think I paid like 85 a double shoulder of this was like 55 maybe 57 so for the extra 30 bucks I got more yield out of this hide and the quality is significantly better so when you go to when you go to pick leather especially if you're picking natural veg tan th these would be considered like tooling leathers um, that little bit of I mean unless you're just starting out and you have no idea what you're doing what your project is for uh, you just want to buy a piece of leather to, to tinker with it or to, to play with tooling and stuff you know get a cheap piece and play with it you could get it from like a hobby place um, but when you're actually using it, if you're going to make strops at home for knives and stuff like that, or like a straight razor strop, that's what these two are, straight razor cuts. But, if, you know, depending on what your use is, that little bit of extra money makes a big difference. Uh, again, 20 or 30 bucks, I would take this all day over this. When it cuts, it cuts cleaner. I mean, just everything about it is, is way better. Bevels nicer, punches holes nicer. Uh, it even glues nicer. So when I made, I made straps out of uh, some excess of these and from horse, and I have kangaroo as well. But uh, you know, every time I I glue the different pieces down, you can tell that the contact cement grabs differently on different hides. Um, so these two are both cowhide. Um, this is harness, eight to ten ounce. This is bridle, 8 to 10 ounce. 8 to 10 ounce just means the thickness of it. I believe it's how, like the weight of the leather in a one square foot piece. So one square foot of these would weigh 8 to 10 ounces, I believe is how that works. These are both straight razor. Um, you can see the, the holes punched in this one. These are straight razor cuts that I made. Um, you know, I sell barber straps, so. That's what these are for. I make them for myself as well, but you could tell this has a different back. It has a like a almost like a wax pasted back. Looks much different than this, but you know they can take a lesser quality piece sometimes, tan it, um, you know, paste the back so it looks cleaner. Um, these are probably similar cuts, but the way that this was treated because it's harness and you can see that it has like kind of a matte finish because I haven't rubbed the, the wax off from uh, from you know where I got it I haven't polished it yet I'll take a cloth and polish it before I send it to the person who buys it but uh, you know this has like a much glossier you should be able to see this 
a much glossier finish to it. Same with this. This is really nice the way how soft it is. It is this piece is phenomenal. Um, and then last is this is bridal. Um, I was going to show a latigo too, but my latigo and my bridal are very similar. Bridal has a softer, more supple feel. Um, the back has a finished back, much like the harness, but it's way softer and smoother. Um, there's not anywhere near the nap that uh, that the harness has on the back. You know, this is essentially flat when you feel it, whereas this has, you know, you can feel like the, uh, the hair is sticking up. So, depending what your project is, depending what your budget is, um, these came from Springfield Leather Company. They're great. Tandy is good. Tandy is really good for um, like a lot, like budget veg tan. Um, I think that that's where this came from actually was Tandy. And then again, this came from eBay. Um, depending what you're looking for, if, if you're into knives and, and that's what your strop is going to be used for, uh, stropping edges back and you're putting diamond sprays, diamond polish, chromium oxide, iron oxide, uh, paste or for straight razors, I would say go veg tan all the way. No finishes, not harness, not bridle, not latigo. Um, again, this is all my opinion. I think natural veg tan when you spray it with diamond sprays or like chromium oxide, um, the way that it dries is much more even. You know, this has wax, this has dye in it. Um, it will dry on it, but it doesn't seep into the pores like the natural veg tan does. Uh, so when choosing leather, pay a little bit of extra money if that's what it's for. You know, if it's for stropping or for tools and stuff, get a little bit better quality veg tan and I think you'll see that your edges will be a little bit nicer the way they come out. The leather, um, you know, it just, it dries better. Uh, it's more supple. You know, that little bit of, let's say 20 or 30 bucks between these two, I think I can get better edges off of this piece any day over this, just based on how that emulsion or spray dries. Uh, it dries just even and, and like almost perfect on this and on my horse hide and my kangaroo because these are higher quality pieces rather than just you know some junk I, I can get at like a hobby store you know that's basically like throw out veg tan um, I'm not going to get the same quality so that little bit of, of price difference will make I think will make a big difference in your edges um, if it's you know strictly for tooling and if you're a seasoned leather worker and you know tooling you know that that you know, the little bit of extra money makes a big difference because you probably wasted a lot of time and money on crap leather that doesn't tool anywhere near as nicely as good leather. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're still here, uh, subscribe. Again, any questions or, or comments, you know, leave them, leave them down below and I'll try to answer as best I can. So thanks for, for hanging out, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Mike. Bye.